What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on the Mustang. I've got a few goodies we're going to be putting on today. So this is my 2020 Mustang GT. It is drift spec, set up as a drift car. It has the full FDF uh, angle kit on it. Billet knuckle, lower control arms, and uh, it's got a ton of angle. But our main issue with that is this wheel, or the front wheels, at full lock, rub the control arm and the sway bar in like pretty bad. You can see this is definitely rubbing pretty aggressively on the lower control arm right here. Right here, and you can see the sway bar and link is also getting eaten up. And we actually had one of these wheels uh, break and explode on us at a drift day, trying to do a backwards entry. is now a table ornament and uh yeah you can see it worked pretty good so to remedy that without having to go with a crazy offset wheel that makes the wheels poke out side the fender even more uh i'm doing some slip-on spacers and arp extended studs so these are some one inch longer arp wheel studs for the front and i also have some really nice hub centric 10 millimeter slip on spacers. I'm hoping since you could see how little that was rubbing, that was after I let my 240s, 240 buddies drive the car and they hit full lock with it after I told them not to. Um, that's how much it rubbed. So I'm thinking just 10 more millimeters of poke of inner clearance will help prevent the rubbing issue. And I also have this thing. You may be wondering, or you may be saying, this just looks like some wires you cut out of the car. This is actually the Cortex uh, power steering, electric power steering controller. There's a little chip, it'll focus right here. And that little chip actually sends a signal with power directly to the uh, power steering rack, the electric power steering rack. And this actually removes the factory input the car will tell it like you've got a sport mode, a comfort mode, a standard mode with different uh, sensitivity or different assistance levels of power steering. So with that, it completely removes that. The car no longer, the steering rack no longer sees speed or how much you're putting steering input in because it adjusts it live while you're driving. And it absolutely is horrible for drifting. So this controller is supposed to completely eliminate that, just have one consistent power steering feel and um, we're gonna see how it works all right so I got you guys set up with me under the car and uh, looks like there's two plugs on this and we're only gonna be doing undoing one which is this little one right here there we go all right so this should be as simple as Zip tying that one out of the way, plugging this one in, and routing this cable up to the fuse panel. All right, so we have our cord ran up and kind of mounted. We have a ground and we have this ran off of a unused fuse that does have signal upon start, according to the diagram. So we're gonna turn it on and hopefully we have power steering. All right, so we have it in accessory mode. Um, I don't think it is on. I guess I'll have to start it. All right, close the door. We have the same amount of check engine lights and stuff before. Um, the steering doesn't really feel any different. It's in the air, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to tell, so. We'll, uh, we'll have to get it on the ground to see if it works. Before we put it on the ground, I'm gonna go ahead and swap out the wheel studs and put the spacers on and also do the basic maintenance. We're doing oil change, transmission fluid, and diff fluid. I'm not gonna bore you guys with that stuff because it's super simple, but uh, I will show you guys the, uh, the wheel studs and put the spacers on. All right, so the basic maintenance is done. We got fresh oil in the engine, fresh oil in the transmission and differential. 
And uh, now I have already started uh, taking out the front lug studs. I forgot to record it, I got excited um, and went ahead and started pulling everything off of the passenger side. But I'll record the driver's side for you guys and we'll start there. The weather in Florida is definitely no longer winter. I'm sweating my ass off. And, uh, but we did get these studs on and it looks great. Check it out. One inch longer studs, went on super easy. Uh, now we're just gonna throw the slip on spacer, put the wheel back on, and then we gotta do the other side. All right, so there it is. Wheel studs and spacers are on, ARP studs, little 10 mil spacer which changes this to a, from a plus 35 to a plus 25 should give us just enough clearance so we don't rub the, uh, the inner barrel on the uh, control arms anymore also if you guys don't have one already get this little thing i got this off of amazon i will uh, put the part number up on the screen so you guys can find it but this slides on over the stud that way you can just take a open-ended uh lugs lug stud no um lug nut open it in lug nut and drill on the stud or drill the stud in yeah drill the stud in makes it super easy all right so here it is back on the ground car hasn't settled but not much more noticeable poke than before those are already tons of poke not much you can do with this with angle kits on this chassis but should fix our problem now I gotta see if the uh, steering rack controller has got power working and uh, hopefully we have power steering. We're gonna have a ton of Christmas lights just because we don't have a lot of things plugged in. Steering assist fault, that's the new one. Tire pressure monitor, obviously we're not running stock wheels. None of the airbags are plugged in. Uh, we don't have wheel speed sensors, so we don't have a trash controller ABS brake lights on because we've got a hydro we don't have a factory brake anymore and uh seat belt lights because we've got a bucket of seats i need to get the other one in here um i don't know if we have power steering i'm gonna try to back up oh no this is really heavy i don't think we have power steering It's just really heavy. Huh. I don't know. I can't tell. I mean, I can turn it. But, well, it's stopped. But this is really heavy. Huh. Let me, uh, let me look into that. Hold on. Alright, I just, uh, undid the, uh, the plug for the power. And let's see if it feels any different. Okay, now it's not turning on. Maybe that, uh, I have a fuse in there maybe. Let's put a fuse back in. All right, we got the fuse back in. Now it should start. And uh, we shouldn't have power steering. We either don't have a good power source or we don't have a good ground. Let's see if we can figure it out. What's up guys? It is the next morning. I was playing around with the uh, fuses and the plugs for this thing and managed to get it without power steering, plug it in. It does have power steering. It's just not as much power steering assistance as I'm used to in the comfort mode. This, I guess, from what everyone else is telling me that's running this kit, is supposed to be like a middle of the road, so it's more of a medium heavy, heavy setting. But they claim it's way better than the factory settings, even on comfort mode. And that's usually what's recommended to drift these cars. So, we have it working, and uh, we'll see how it is on the street, and then probably take it out 
for some skids somewhere later tonight. So update, it's been a few days and uh, the power steering control module actually has been on the entire time. It has killed the battery. Uh, that's why I haven't taken it out to do a test yet. Uh, Jump the car, recharge the battery. It's running fine, but I have it unplugged. I haven't plugged it back in. And after speaking with a few friends that have it on their car and uh, telling me it's really just for when the rack dies, it does help with the, the resistance changes, but it doesn't really help the car self-steer much. And that's my biggest thing of why I wanted it. And I guess some of the other people maybe have had a placebo effect with it. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but yeah, it's not what I'm really wanting. So I don't feel a reason to actually use it. And I'll actually show you some comparison videos of how the car is currently versus my buddy Elliot's car, who's running the same control module on his car and how the steering looks pretty much identical. spoken to uh, Chris Leonard who's running in Formula Drift Pro-Am in an S550 Mustang and after chatting with him for a bit he's running a hydraulic rack from an older Mustang and he's telling me that the self-steer is amazing so I'm waiting for some more videos in-car videos of his driving with that car to pop up to see if it's really what I'm looking for because we can make that change without too much work We'll have to do some custom rack mounts and lengthen the steering shaft. Uh, and then there's a few different options as far as the uh, power steering pump we can go with, but none of it seems too crazy. So once I get the videos from him, I might end up chasing that route, but for now, I'm comfortable driving the Mustang the way it is. I'm just gonna leave it. The added wheel spacers do help with a little bit of trail wheel drag, which helps the car self steer a little bit better. We're going to be going to drift it this weekend uh, out at South Georgia Motorsports Park for some testing, some videos, and I'll bring you guys along with me. It's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for when that video comes out, and I'll see you guys soon. In my head, like memories after death To be a legend instead Of something you can forget I'm living up every breath I'd rather lead than be led I'll fill the seats as I spread With every word that I've said